So thanks everybody for tuning in for all of you that have been hanging here for a few minutes. Sorry for the awkward pauses, but you know, that's just how it goes. And uh, I've kind of figured out if you guys tuned in for the juggler panel that I did back in June, um, you may have noticed that like the person who wasn't, who was talking wasn't always on the screen. And I figured out since then that it was because you saw whoever like I picked to watch and I picked like a couple of people throughout and then like just forgot about it. So then it was just like on a person's face no matter what was happening. So sorry for that awkwardness. Um, this is going to be instead of going back and forth between me and Delaney, I'm just going to put it on her. And so when I ask questions, hopefully I'll do it quick. So that way Delaney isn't waiting awkwardly like this right here right now. <laughs> um, so again, thanks for tuning in and we'll get started with some questions. So, uh, Delaney, if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been juggling, and what you're most excited about when it comes to juggling right now. Hi, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been juggling for about five years, or a little over five years, and I'm most excited about in juggling is just going to festivals and getting better at juggling. All right, and... Uh, what what festival have you gone to recently that's like really gotten you fired up? Um, I went to WGF was the most recent one. Um, I also went to the St. Louis Juggling Festival, and that was one of my personal favorites. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people I knew and a great lineup in the show, so it was so sort of fun. Yeah. Um, and what was your highlight of, of each of those, really? Honestly, the people. It's probably usually my favorite part, and just juggling late at night um, with a bunch of really good jugglers. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably my most favorite part. Do you find that your juggling skills like go down, you know, as the night gets later? <laughs> yes, definitely. You definitely <laughs> get fatigued, for sure. Are they like, hey, Delaney, qualify nine balls, and you're like, wait till tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't take requests like that at past 12. So. <laughs> past 12. So you can do it all the way up till midnight. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, but that's maybe. pretty good. We'll remember that. Um, all right. So what inspired you to juggle? Like, the so I started, thing. yeah. So I started juggling when I was 13 and it was something I'd always wanted to learn. I can remember when I was even younger than that. Um, just trying to like throw around a couple of balls, you know, I'm like the two ball shower thing and I can never do it. Um, so one day we were at my, all my family was at this family gathering and my uncle was teaching all the cousins how to juggle. And so, you know, I went over and learned and I didn't really pick up on it very fast. Um, I did got like five catches first day. Um, but I, then I went home after that and got some tennis balls and I just kept going for, yeah, till now. So. Okay. So that was when you were 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Like, so you didn't, you hadn't touched juggling balls before you were 13. Mm -mm, not formally. Nope. Okay. And would you say that like, even when you started, it wasn't really natural. It was, it was, took a lot of practice. Yeah. I mean, I'd done um, sports. I played soccer and softball before I started juggling. So I had some athletic ability, I guess, but I'd never, uh, I was never very natural. I guess I would go and consider myself a natural as far as juggling goes. Mm -hmm. And what keeps you going? Why do you keep juggling? Um, I just want to see how good I can get. Uh, I also just love practicing. I love the process of getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in juggling, that's one of the biggest parts of it. So, yep. I read the interview that you wrote out for David Kane like three years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess you're 15. And you said uh, I, I, the question of why, I think it was, it was either why do you keep juggling or why do you, why do you practice? And your answer was, I love juggling. That was the answer. So, like, how would you define the the love of juggling? What does that mean for you? <laughs> Getting into the defining zone, are we? Um, <laughs> yeah, the question I've already gotten is, uh, is one of those. So, yeah, for sure. I'm not, not going to ask you that right now. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I guess just wanting to do it all the time, um, thinking about it a lot. I think it's like loving anything else, as far as hobbies go. Mm -hmm. So. So would you say you just, you just enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right. 
Um, and uh, before we get any further, um, a lot of you are probably wondering, you know, Sean said that we could win some flying clipper balls. How do we do that? Um, well, I will tell you. But first, a word from our sponsors, who is, as you've seen, Flying Clipper primarily. So Flying Clipper, actually I need to change this so you can see it. Some of you probably know about Flying Clipper. Some of you don't. Flying Clipper's been around for since the 80s. They started out making foot bags. And Jim Fitzgerald was, is the CEO now, was one of the founders. He designed some of the best foot bags in the world. A couple years ago, he semi-retired and started putting that creative juice towards juggling balls. He's made some really innovative and... Uh, and durable like quality product including the fat tires that have rubber filling and the hybrids that have plastic pellets and crush rock really cool stuff um you definitely want to check out um flying clipper his products are top notch if you don't have a set you should find a friend that does and give them a toss they're washable handmade as i've already said they're durable they're innovative and uh, and they provide excellent customer care which i have um, witnessed and experienced personally um, in working with Jim Fitzgerald. So um, you should definitely check him out. Which leads me to this one second. If you go to flyingclipper.com, oh, wrong window, wrong window failing, flyingclipper.com slash TJ which stands for Everyday Juggler, there's a special page where you can buy Flying Clipper balls at a discount. So if you don't win those balls today, you can get on here and you can buy balls at a pretty good discount. So $15 ball is only $12. So if you buy five balls, it's like you're getting a ball free. So you definitely want to check that out. Go ahead and support Flying Clipper um, since they're supporting us. All right. And this advertisement over <laughs> and we're back all right so i said i'd tell you how to win those balls if you leave a comment or ask a question you'll be entered to win and you can win those balls you have the iga membership and also a copy of lido dipmar's book fast juggling success which is uh has a lot of great tips in it all right so back to the interview have you been involved in any juggling clubs in your life I have been. I've been involved in two. Um, so growing up, I was involved in the Wasatch Front Juggler, which is a local Utah club. And then recently, I went to college this past um, year, and I go to the Colorado Springs Juggling Club. So okay. they're both really good. Yeah. Um, what part of juggling and what part of club, like being part of a club, kind of motivates you? How much is the people and how much is the actual just getting better? Um, I would say as far as like a weekly juggling club, a lot of it is just being inspired by the people there. Um, also getting to teach is really cool. I started going to the one in Salt Lake when I was just barely started. So I was like a five ball juggler. And so they really helped me out and kept me, you know, motivated. And there's a couple really good jugglers there, like Arash Farhang. Um, he helped me quite a bit, so it's fun. Okay. And who has kind of supported you along the way the most? Um, definitely my mom is taking me to all the juggling festivals around. She's been really supportive. My dad's taking me to all the local juggling clubs, like every Sunday. And then I also have a juggling coach, Richard Kennison, and he's really helped me from the very beginning um, mm -hmm. as far as technique and for acts and for competing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So from Chris the Juggler, who are your favorite jugglers? Um, so growing up, it's always been Tug Sayers for a long time. Uh, I guess he was like one of the first jugglers I ever watched. And I guess recently I've been watching more of like Svetlana um, and then Eric Bates with the cigar boxes. And also Alexander Kobelkoff and Kolnikov are both really good. Mm. You said you've been watching some cigar box stuff. Have you experimented yeah. with that a lot? <laughs> no, I haven't. I, don't, I've, I think I've tried it once, but that's about it. Yeah. All right. Um, Felix asked a good question. At what point in your juggling did you feel confident enough to post a video online? Were you nervous about <laughs> the responses you were going to get? Yeah, I think in the summer of 2013, I posted my first video. It was like, 30 catches of five ball back crosses. It wasn't even like a complete video. 
it was just like one trick. Um, but I've deleted it since then. So <laughs> can't find it anywhere. Yeah. Um, and what about like longer form videos? Um, yeah, I posted those probably two and a half years into my juggling. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, when you're starting out, you, you know, I think it's good to post and you get some good feedback from people as far as, you know, technique goes. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, I think it's fun when you can see like jugglers progress over time. So you see when someone wasn't quite as good and then you can kind of see where they are today. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Marizo asked a question that I was, I was and a, a variation of question I was going to ask. So, um, and I'll go ahead and ask that in five years, when you look back at your juggling, what do you want to, what do you want to see? What do you want to look, you want to look at your history of juggling and say, this is what I accomplished. Can you say that one more time? When you look back at your juggling in five years, what do you want to say you've accomplished? Um, I would like to say that I have a more of like a, of a juggling act for performance. Um, I'd also just like to see that I got, you know, like you can see how much better I've got gotten. Um, um, yeah. You okay. Know. So you want to look back, you want to have a performance. Um, have you, I, obviously you do competitions, but, um, have you developed any performances so far? Um, yeah, last summer, uh, I toured with Circus Mercus, which is this youth traveling circus in New England. And I performed, I guess, like 66 shows with them wow. over the summer. And that's, I guess, the most performing I've done. I've done some festivals and some local shows or like walk arounds, but it's about mm -hmm. it. How do you think, how do you see your act developing? Do you think that'll be more technical, like you like to juggle, or will it be more, um, um, audience centered or comedic. Yeah, it'll be like technical, more like a kind of like a riot. Well, I mean, more of a circus act, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. um, but still, like technique and some movement. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you think you want to pursue full time after college, or is it just something that you think you'll do? Um, time? I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Uh, I kind of looked at the options a little bit, um, but not. I haven't made a decision yet. Yeah, when you went to the WJF this year, did you expect to uh, come in first? Um, I don't really. When I compete, I don't really look too far ahead because you. There's so many things you can't control, so I just really try and focus on what I can control in my routines and try and figure everything out that I want to do. And then just try to do it to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that was a really, you really avoided that question there. But do you think that coming away with a win kind of changed your view on where you could go with juggling? Um, not really. Um, I competed at IGA a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and won juniors. And I don't know. It doesn't really change my perspective too much. Okay. Um, so obviously you just talked about how you won juniors and I mentioned that you won J WJF, um, and that takes a lot of practice. So what is your, just your daily practice or it may not be J daily at this point, but your practice regimen look like now? Um, well, I think one of the most important things is to practice every day. Um, I think Gatto preached that a lot, but practice every day. Um, I try, when I practice, I often do like the pyramid practice session. So you start with like a lower rep or like low reps for like a lot. And then you kind of like build up. Um, and that's really helped me. I don't really like just juggling to failure over mm -hmm. and over again. Mm -hmm. That's never been something that's helped me or I've been very interested in. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely practice a couple hours every day. And it's just something fun to do. It's definitely relaxing. So. Yeah. It kind of takes your mind away from yeah, whatever else sure. is going on. Um, has there ever been a time where like you didn't feel motivated to juggle anymore? Uh, for sure. There's definitely been times where I'm like, why am I doing this? But I don't know. I'm, I'm very, I guess, disciplined in my practice sessions and I'll go whether I want to be there or not most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So 
out of all the performances you did in New England, did any of them stick out or did any of them teach you anything? Um, well, I was in more of a group act um, with like a little solo within the act. And so I definitely, you know, learned how to work with others. I think that's important. Also, within the show, you, d you do other things. You also like help with cues and, you know, um, setting stuff, taking it off, whatnot. So I think just being involved in like a whole production uh, was very educational. Mm -hmm. And for, I'm trying to decide if I want to ask you more about performances or not. Do you think that performing makes you better as a juggler? Um, yes and no. I think in order to be like ready for performance, you have to own a skill completely. Um, you don't want to go on stage with a skill that's kind of iffy. So it makes you master skills, not just get them video ready. Um, mm. But I think you can also spend time working on an act and that takes away from maybe just working on your five clubs or some balls or whatever you're practicing at the moment. Mm -hmm. That is a great answer. Um, what tips do you have for somebody who wants to become a techno juggler, technical juggler like you? Um, well, first of all, I'd say make sure that the kind of juggling you do, you care about. Don't just be a technical juggler to be a technical juggler. If you're more into the creative side, go for that. Um, but if you really do want to be a technical juggler, I mean, it's all about like practice and the way you practice. I talked about the the pyramid practice session, and I think, I think that really helps. Mm. Um, but also just enjoying juggling, I think that helps. Is I think that's the number one thing to get better, and no matter what style of juggling you want to get better at. Yeah. Um, can you explain the pyramid practice? Yeah, okay. So say you're learning five ball cascade. So let's say you, your max is like 50 catches or something. So you'd start your practice session with, say, 10 qualifies. Then maybe do, you know, five um, reps of 20 catches, and then maybe do 30 a couple times. And then usually what I like to do is end the practice session with just like an all-out run to see how, how it's helped. Um, and I think, I think that's a big technique that I, I don't think a lot of people use as much mm -hmm. as they should. So it's all about the pyramid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, while we're on the topic of technical juggling, and since it's the beginning of the year, basically, um, David Kane asks, what are some technical goals for this year? David Kane. Um, my numbers, my numbers, numbers juggling has never been the greatest. The greatest it's something, something, I've, something I've been interested, interested, in, interested in. So I definitely so want to improve that, that as far as like seven clubs goes, goes. Um, eight, nine rings. And then also my seven balls, uh, I don't consider that to be very good. So I definitely want to improve with that. Cool. And uh, Mike Moore was, said uh, um, behind the back, that five five ball back cross record question mark. Ooh, um, I think I've only ever like taken it to fifty catches. I've never done an all out as far as I can go. But yeah, I'll get on it. Yeah. So, do you think if you set up a video camera, you could break it? Yeah, I could probably get a hundred, but that's probably as far as I could go. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm going to look through these questions really quick. Um, do you have any experience? This is from Cole. Do you have any experience with other skill toys besides balls, rings, clubs? Um, not as far as juggling goes. Um, I, I can do a roll of bola. That's about as good as it gets. So, mm -hmm. so you haven't mastered the Diablo yet or... Um, yeah. no, I can do like a trapeze with it, but it's about it. All right. Um, who inspires you to try new tricks and where to get your ideas from? That's from Felix. Okay. Um, definitely watching other videos from other jugglers. Um, there's a lot of great jugglers out there. Um, usually I'll sit down with like a pen and a paper and I can usually write up, you know, maybe a trick I want to try. Um, usually I have lots of patterns already set that I want to learn. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, having the time to get to them. 
Mm -hmm. So there's, is there any one person that you've seen um, more often than not? I wouldn't say one person. I watch um, maybe Jonah off in a greenhouse. I watch some of his stuff. Um, like older jugglers, maybe Vova or mm -hmm. Thomas Dietz, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so how have you seen juggling affect your life for the better? Um, I don't know. It's definitely giving me a purpose, something, you know, I, I know when I wake up in the morning, you know, I at least, you know, going to go juggle that day. Uh, it's definitely, you know, help me find some really great friends, um, get to travel with it. So, I mean, it's definitely, you know, being a part of the juggling community has been something really fun for me. So mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. Awesome. And have you seen it change other people's lives for the better as well? Um, <laughs> I, I don't have like a specific example. Yeah. Um, there's lots of jugglers at my juggling club, you know, older jugglers. And I mean, you know, it's fun to see them on Sunday and, you know, they really like passing and, you know, so I guess, you know, community again. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got some uh, quick fire questions for you. Um, so, you know, you don't have to, I'm going to ask them quick. You don't have to answer them quick. What's your favorite trick or pattern to do? Uh, I like five room pancakes. Yes, we like it when you do that too. They're beautiful. <laughs> what about to watch? I like watching three club body throws, is especially when they're uh, really good. Like Masha Hero, it's amazing at them. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite festival that you've been to so far? I really like IJA's super supportive community, and you know it's a week long fest. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hang out and juggle for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be there this year. Should be. Mm -hmm. Your favorite prep to juggle? I'd say rings. Favorite brand of rings? Honestly, I, I bought my rings when I, when I first started juggling. So I think they're Mr. Babash, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Favorite music to listen to while you're juggling? Ooh, um, I usually listen to like some podcasts uh, while mm -hmm. I'm juggling. But if I was going to listen to music, probably some sort of. Um, you know, pop or something. Okay, when you know, I tried listening to um Dan Holzman's podcast yesterday when I was practicing, and it was just too distracting for me. Like I can't do two things <laughs> at once. I'd be like thinking about what was going on in the podcast, and then all the balls would fall on the ground. I'd be like, I gotta, I gotta stop. Yeah, <laughs> when I first started juggling, um, back when I lived at home, I juggled in my living room, and that if you watch some of my videos, like. The place with like the fireplace. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I would have the TV on. So I, I started with, like the first four years I juggled. I'd always watch TV while I practiced. Oh so. yeah. Do you think that that? Do you think that helped you? Um, get so good at juggling. Well, I think having the space always open to practice is really nice. Because sometimes when I was at school and I practiced in the racquetball court, um, people asked me to leave because they want to uh, play racquetball. Yeah. But I the TV. How dare them. Yeah, right. Um, but the TV, I don't think the TV helped at all. I think it's probably distracting. But. Oh, really? Well, I was just yeah. thinking like one kind of pro of that is that like you're, you're, you're not looking at the balls nearly as much. So I would think that you're, I mean, you're using peripheral, peripheral a lot more. So I would think that you would get a much more consistent throw. Well, I mean, I I juggle and then look at the TV and then juggle. So oh, it wasn't okay. like I was watching TV while I was practicing. You it was just on. You could do five ball back crosses and look at the TV, right? Right, that would. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet Mike Moore could do it. What do you think, I Mike? Could. Mike, can you do that? <laughs> um. All right. Sorry, I got distracted here. Um. All right. Out of all the jugglers we've talked about so far that have that you get inspiration from, who's like the one that you look up to? Um, I guess I'd have to go back to Doug Sayers. I mean, he doesn't juggle as much anymore or at all, but I mean, just watching his old videos and all mm -hmm. the stuff he accomplished in juggling. Um, yeah. and then, I mean, I know him somewhat now, so it's kind of yeah. cool to meet your idol in juggling. Yeah. Um, Felix asked if there's other hobbies besides juggling that have helped you with your juggling in any way. Um, I remember... For example, I was talking to, 
I don't remember who it was. And one of the interviews I did, we kind of talked about this idea of using everyday experiences and figuring out how those impact your juggling. For example, um, like waiting tables, waiting tables, you carry a tray around like this and, um, and you learn balance in that way. Is there any hobbies that you've had that have impacted how you juggle? Um, well, before I started juggling, I, I already said this, but I played soccer and softball. So I guess some coordination skills. And then I also, I also snowboard now. Um, and I used to be a really good knitter. And I, I also like flew remote control airplanes. So I, I had a, like a lot of kind of weird hobbies, but I yeah. did. Okay. Um, I think that's like the typical juggler. We all have right. like all these strange hobbies. Um, rem- remote control airplanes that you said? Yeah. Yep. We, like hard- me and my dad. Yeah. What? Are those hard to fly? Yeah, they are. They definitely take like a lot of practice. If you like get the real ones, not just like the little helicopter. Yeah. yeah. I lived um, in a friend's parents basement for a couple of years and uh in the basement he had this huge room where he just he like collected like remote control airplanes he probably had like 500 like oh, wow remote, yeah it was ridiculous um and i always wondered if they were hard to fly um all right so quinn said has have you ever broke anything in that room he's always <laughs> been curious and i um as well i, I definitely i have i wasn't actually juggling so here's here's the fun story so i i often watch sports while i'm juggling because i'm a huge sports fan and so this was like two years ago. I was watching like the Little League World Series. And so I have one of my clubs in my hand and I'm just kind of like swinging it back and forth. Right. And then I kind of, I turn away from the TV and I accidentally let go of the club and it's, it hit the TV and cracked the whole screen. So I had to buy a new one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what Was it time for a new TV anyway? I mean, my parents are kind of cheap, so it was pretty old, but... It could have, it was, it was a good TV, but so, yeah. How did that conversation go? Like, were they really mad? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I walked into my dad's office and like, I think I broke the TV and he's like, let's go buy a new one. So oh, I paid okay. for it, but I mean, yeah. All right. He was thinking, all right, new TV for dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't. Um, here's a great question. King Arrogant asked, how do you prevent hurting yourself when you're juggling rings? Um, so even right now I have like a little bump on one of my hands, um, from like a, I don't know, a couple of days ago I was doing too much seven rings, but, uh, I definitely have a lot of calluses from rings. You know, um, I mean, I, I guess my best advice is once it starts to hurt, stop because mm. once it like bruises or. Um, you get like a sore in your hand that it takes longer to heal. So I mean, obviously if you're working on a trick, you, you usually want to keep going, but I'd advise mm-hmm. stopping and coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause time keeps going and you can come back to yeah. it the next day or in a week if you need to. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, I guess it's, it's a lot like working out or running. Mm-hmm. If, um, when right. you first start doing that, you gotta, you gotta go easy until you build up those muscles Mm-hmm. And in sure. our case, build up those calluses. <laughs> yep. Mark Schneider, do you ever want to come to the EJC? I would love to. Um, <laughs> it's not in the, re, um, you know, uh, future right now, but hopefully soon it will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spencer, what is your dream trick? Ooh, um, I would say like a seven ball, seven up five forty. Um, I don't really have a lot of dream tricks, maybe running some ring pancakes. Um, I guess that's about it. Here's a question for me. Are you going to put out a video that is going to make OFEC jealous? (laughs) Um, I guess you have to wait and see. (laughs) Um, from David Kane again, do you plan to compete in IJ individual championships sometime soon? Uh, I do. Um, right now, I'm, th- I'm thinking about doing this year. No promises, but could be, could be this year. Mm-hmm. Could be this year. All right, I like that. Um, Spencer, do you how do how do your friends who are not jugglers react when they hear you're a juggler? So all through, I, I started juggling end of middle school, and really 
almost all through high school. I didn't tell anyone I juggled as, as far as school. Um, cause I know, I, and, that, and even in college, I, I usually don't tell people I juggle because I don't want to be known as like the juggling girl. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I would tell a couple close friends and, you know, people see me practice now in the racquetball court, I guess they know, but. How big is I the college you go to? It's 2,500. So pretty small, very okay. small school. So they know you as the juggling girl. They've got to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how long but, do you usually wait before you let that cat out of the bag? Um, I mean, it depends. I mean, if I'm just talking to someone in class, I, I won't tell them. But I mean, if we're friends, then you know, I'll tell them. Yeah. Okay. Um, for everybody that's just tuning in, this is Delaney Bayless talking about her juggling life and experiences and giving us tips on how to become as good as her, which is uh, in the cards for all of us, I think. And anyway, um, she, I just wanted to remind you that if you want to win some juggling stuff, you just got to leave a comment or ask a question and you'll be entered to win. And, uh, at some point I'll tell you if you won. Um, so let's see here. I ran, I, I think I've gone through all of my normal questions <clears throat> and other people, I think I went through all those questions too. Oh, here's some more. Um, do you think you'll ever be able to flash seven ball back crosses from Noah? Uh, seven ball back crosses? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've already done that. But, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> what about qualifying? Um, maybe if I practiced, it's not not my favorite trick, but mm. oh, I should work on it. Yeah. Um, from Luca, when do you? When are you going to upload a new video? Um, usually, I, I've kind of, in the last two years, I've just made videos in May and November, uh, mostly because I, I, I don't like to upload a lot of videos at like, very similar you know, skill levels for me. Mm. So I usually like to wait till I'm considerably better for my last video to make mm-hmm. a new one. I actually recommend for anybody um, watching to go check out Delaney's videos that you've, I'm sure you've all seen them, but watch them all in a row. Um, and it's, it's pretty cool to kind of like, you know, for exactly what you said, like you can see like drastic improvement with each one. Um, obviously they're all great, but, um, one thing I noticed is that you just, as these videos have gone until your last one, everything just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, Mm -hmm. much more consistent with throws. Yeah. And I've definitely started to focus more on like the editing of them. Um, cause I used to just, you know, film a couple tricks in my living room and then call it good. So, but it's a lot more fun to put some thought into the video and trying to make it a little more exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, from uh, Maurizio, what do you think the, uh, an audience expects from a juggling act? Well, I think a lot of people, um, as far as like technical juggling goes, they don't really know that exists. Um, I think, but I think the most important thing is like connection in an act i think the juggling is very secondary to the way you make them feel as mm-hmm. far as the connection mm-hmm. so how do you how do you make them feel um, how, do you, how do you make them connect <laughs> i mean obviously it's i think you can break it down extremely simple as far as like looking in the audience and um we I mean, trying to relate i guess but i mean it's definitely you know part of the process i'm still trying to Figure it out, and figure out, and work on. Mm-hmm. Um, from David Kane, other than yourself, who do you consider most talented female juggler at the moment? At the moment, um, as far as just like talent or like my favorite to watch, Svetlana. I can't, I don't know her last name, but mm-hmm. she's definitely. I mean, as far as you know, amazing. She's you know, the one that does all the contortion stuff. Yeah. Um. I don't know about contortion, but she does like, she juggles those white clubs and she's very graceful, I guess. I think mm-hmm. she, she has a background of gymnastics training, rhythmic mm-hmm. gymnastics. Uh, she's really good. Um, all right. Leary, Camere, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. How long is your practice? Um, usually I'll do two hour practice sessions um, and I usually bring one prop. So that practice, I, I don't like switching between props during the same practice. Um, usually I'll have, you know, a couple tricks or patterns I want to work on, and then maybe I'll just try a couple of things at the end. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Well, um, I think you have answered a lot of great questions. Um, I guess a couple more just about practicing. Cause I think a lot of, a lot of us watch you and we go, you know what? We'll never be that good. <laughs> um, but we can get better. So just talking a little bit more about practice. I and mean, we talked about the pyramid. Um, do you have any other tips for practice? Yeah, I would say a big one is, you know, look up a bunch of different practice sessions or ask some good jugglers, you know, what they do. And I think just try out a bunch of different things because what works for me may not necessarily work for you or vice versa. So I think, you know, being diligent and practicing every day, but also trying different practice techniques or, you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. What is the, what do you think for you, what's the single most like, or the thing that you've done the most consistently over the years that has helped you get better? Honestly, just practicing every day. I mean, there's no magic formula to mm -hmm. it. You just have to keep practicing all the time. Yeah. Um, do you ever get bored when you're practicing? Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Um, usually, I mean, usually I don't get bored. Maybe something like isn't working and I'll get frustrated. Um, so you just have to like move on to something else. I think so. Okay. So when you get bored, you just, or, you, yeah, move on. Something do you else. pick up another prop or do you just try working on a different pattern or usually different pattern? Um, sometimes what I usually pick the prop I'm going to practice with cause I have to walk to practice and I don't want to have to bring all my props with me. Mm -hmm. Um, so usually if I usually rotate props, but if like I'm on clubs or something, I'm really not excited about clubs that day then I might switch to balls or mm -hmm. rings or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is actually goes great with this conversation from Greg Phillips. Um, tell us more about what it's like working with a coach specifically Richard. Right. So Richard's amazing. Um, he's definitely helped me a lot with technique, but also, um, kind of like helped me with like juggling questions I've had practice technique. Um, honestly, I'll, I'll call him sometimes and just ask him about juggling things. Um, but I mean, sometimes I'll send him tapes of what I'm working on. Um, it's definitely encouraging to mm -hmm. have a, have a juggling coach. And I think you even just, I mean, if you don't have a juggling coach, which, you know, most people don't, um, I think just filming your juggling and like watching it over, because a lot mm -hmm. of times you're doing something wrong and it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. if you could see it, but you can't see it. And so you mm -hmm. don't know how to correct it. So I think that's you know, maybe yeah. one tip that'll help. That's great. You can be your own, you can be your own coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause at least all of us that are involved in the online community, we watch all these great jugglers all the time. We know what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can't always see that from our perspective. Um, Felix asks if you've ever worked on a trick just for a video and then never practice it again. Um, maybe a connection, but usually not patterns as much. Mm -hmm. Um, that's probably something. Um, I guess in my recent video, um, kind of the overhead pancake one, um, I haven't worked on that too much since. But I mean, there's a couple ones like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was going to ask you a question, and it's gone. Oh, this was what's the hardest trick that you've ever worked on? Or a pattern, actually. So what it really about. Um, not hardest, necessarily like like objectively the hardest pattern, but like for you. For me. So, yeah. Um I think uh three cup body throws, Alberts. That one took me a long time. Mm -hmm. Um and just like consistent practice every day. Yeah. Um that was that was definitely a tough one. Um, and then this isn't about juggling from Jimmy. Um, you have a major picked yet. Yes. It's a very typical juggler one, math and economics. Maybe I might do some business, but yeah. something like that. Yeah. So one day you'll write a book on site swap. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, that'll, be, that'll be perfect. You can, um, right. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So um, do you have any, or not do you, I want you to uh, give us some words of inspiration for the juggling community at large. Yeah. So I think a big one is don't compare yourself to other jugglers. Um, really figure out what you want to do as a juggler and then do that. I mean, I know a lot of people who watch, you know, juggling videos and then they, you know, get discouraged or, you know, what have you about how good someone else is. Um, I mean, we're all, you know, on different, you know, roads to where we want to be as a juggler. Um, so don't really compare yourself to someone else or think you're not good or whatever. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess that's cliche, but. <laughs> be you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Figure out what it is a like about you or what you love about juggling or, or who you want to be, not even necessarily who you want to be. Cause sometimes who you want to be, isn't who you are. So figuring right. out what fits best with you. Awesome. If people wanted to find your stuff, where can they find it? Um, Delaney Bayless, uh, YouTube channel, Facebook. That's about it. All right. And, uh, next week who we got on next week. We got Norby on next week, and uh, sponsors are going to be Mops and Strings on Things. You'll be able to win a ticket to Manipulations um, by Mops and a uh, set of Poi to take with you, as I'm sure you'll want to when you go to that festival. Um, and I think we're good. Do you have any last words that you want to share with the community? Um, have fun juggling, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let me see. I got one more here. Okay, we'll ask this, and then we'll let this be the last one. This is from uh, Zach McAllister, I assume. Um, it's from Zach. I assume it's McAllister. What single trick or pattern have you always wanted to learn but never did? Um, I don't know. Um, maybe like seven ring back crosses, like just like a flash of that, or it's like seven ring – Pancake floor verse. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. All right. So we, we can expect that in the next video then. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, Delaney. Well, thanks a lot for being on. And uh, Thank you. Keep it up. We look forward to it. And uh, for everybody else, until next time, keep on juggling. <laughs>